In the ideal world, there would be no such thing as prejudice or bias. People would just listen dispassionately to the facts on any issue, and they would use reason and common sense to decide whether what was being suggested was correct or incorrect, right or wrong. Sadly, that is rarely the case. Human beings have an incredible capacity for bias, and frequently facts, science, and common sense play little role in their attitudes, values, and beliefs. And that is certainly true in the realm of nutrition, diet, and diabetes. To illustrate this, I want to share a few thoughts about the trial of professor, scientist, and doctor Tim Noakes of South Africa. Tim Noakes is now in his 70s, and he's had a lifelong passion for the area of sports nutrition. He has impeccable credentials, winning more awards in his life than a dozen ordinary doctors or scientists. Wikipedia reports that in 2008, he was elected Honorary Fellow of the Faculty of Sports and Exercise Medicine in the UK, the first foreigner to be so recognized. In 2012, he received the Lifetime Achievement Award from South Africa's National Research Foundation for his contribution to sports science research. In 2014, the Southern Africa Association for the Advancement of Science awarded Noakes their prestigious South Africa Gold Medal for his outstanding contribution to sports physiology. I could name several more medals and honors, but you get the idea. He is not a typical nutritionist writing an occasional article about sports or nutrition. What I want to talk with you today about is the trial that Tim Noakes was forced to endure, which drug out nearly four years before it finally ended. It started, amazingly enough, with a couple of tweets. Tim was asked in a tweet whether it was okay for breastfeeding mothers to eat a low-carb diet. This lady was apparently concerned about whether eating cauliflower and dairy could cause problems for her nursing baby. Noakes replied with these words, The baby doesn't eat the dairy and cauliflower, just very healthy, high-fat breast milk. Key is wean the baby onto low-carb, high-fat. Tim Noakes had no idea that that simple tweet was going to take him down such a long road of a four-year trial, and it would force him into early retirement and cost him much in his personal life. What he didn't realize was there was a nutrition in his own country, South Africa, who literally despised him. And uh, she despised his message of low-carb, high-fat. She was eagerly looking for a way, any way she could, to expose him for the fraud she thought he was and bring him down. At that time, Noakes was a pretty popular nutritionist in his nation, and he was making converts of a great many people who were forsaking the dogma that says that low-fat, high-carb diets were perfect for one and all. Within hours, she angrily tweeted to Noakes, You've gone too far. Be sure that I will be reporting this to the Health Professions Council of South Africa. And she did just that. In a relatively short time, the HBCSA, the Health Professions Council of South Africa, had a hearing, a so-called hearing, to determine whether Noakes had behaved unprofessionally and needed to have his medical license taken from him. Noakes decided to fight the charges, which he really didn't need to do. At that time, he was around 65, and he could have let them take his license and retire to an easy life, writing an occasional book here and there. But to his credit, he determined to stand and fight. And off and on, over the next several years, Noakes appeared at this hearing, which turned into more of a court trial, and he was examined and cross-examined. Marika Saboros writes, Noakes himself spoke for almost 40 hours, showing nearly 1,200 slides and citing 350-odd publications and other materials. Now, in a normal court of law, this trial would have been far more specific than it turned out to be. The case would have been all about that single tweet and whether Noakes was giving medical advice to a woman who was not really his patient. But the hearing went far beyond that, and ultimately it became all about whether the low-carb, high-fat diet is legitimate, healthy, and beneficial. 
Noakes called Nina Teicholz to testify for his side, who wrote the New York Times bestseller, The Big Fat Surprise, Why Butter, Meat, and Cheese Belong in a Healthy Diet. This book gives devastating evidence to the idea that meat and dairy lead to heart disease and artery blockage. He also called Dr. Zoe Harcombe, a nutritionist and researcher with a Ph.D. from Cambridge University, to testify to the efficacy of the low-carb, high-fat diet. Tim Noakes said this, I knew that if we got to present the science, we would win. It was just a matter of getting the science before the committee. And that is exactly what happened. Testimony after testimony, research study after research study, Tim Noakes and his fellow low-carbers overwhelmed their opponents who had very little on their side except their own biases. Dr. Zoe Harcomb said this, Once you realize that there's nothing that the cross-examiner can ask you that you haven't run through already in your mind, it is the most fantastic, enjoyable thing. It's like a boxing match, but you know he's not even going to land a punch. Well, finally, after several years of testimonies and discussions, The lady who presided over the hearing, which had become a trial, announced their verdict by saying the complainant has not proven on the balance of probabilities that the respondent, as a medical practitioner, acted unprofessionally in a manner that is not in accordance with the standards and norms of the medical profession. She told him, Professor Noakes, on the charge of unprofessional conduct, the majority of this committee find you not guilty. Noakes supporters cheered loudly, but the vitriol, hatred, and anger of the Health Professions Council of South Africa ran so deep, they appealed the verdict, which took another year to run its course. Finally, in 2018, that appeal was denied, and the case was forever put to death. Nina Teicholz commented on the depth of the opposition and hatred that Noakes experienced, saying about him, The vested interests in the high-carb, low-fat diet are enormous, and I don't think he understood what he was taking on. Really, none of us have understood the power of the establishment that we have taken on. Marika Saboros wrote, I could not have foreseen the labyrinthine extent of vested interests ranged against Noakes. Are the role shadowy proxy organizations for multinational sugar and processed food and soft drink companies have played in suppressing and discrediting evidence that reflects badly on their products and in influencing dietary advice? Now, here's an insight that is both fascinating and scary at the same time. There were people then, and there are people today, who absolutely hate the low-carb, high-fat diet. Not because it doesn't work, but because it reflects badly on their products or their beliefs and values, or in some cases, it hits them right in the pocketbook. It doesn't matter to them whether you beat diabetes. They could not care less about that. Their problem with this diet is that it challenges them in one way or another. It upsets the apple cart. It upends the status quo, which has long maintained that eating a very low-fat, high-carb diet is healthy and righteous. In a sense, this way of eating seems to them like heretical dietary blasphemy. They've embraced an all-plant food diet as God, and when you suggest there's another and better way, you're attempting to overthrow their God and their religion. One thing that surprised Tim Noakes as he underwent this trial and endured the scorn of most of the nutritionists and medical professions was just how vehement and angry these people were. He expected people would disagree with him. That will always be the case when a new truth replaces an old falsehood that has been widely accepted. Disagreement is natural, but the vehemence, the vitriol, the mockery, even the hatred came as a shock to him. Now, Tim Noakes is by nature a non-confrontational guy. In fact, he's a really nice guy who smiles all the time. I've watched a number of his videos. I've never seen him frown or even have a poker face. He smiles when he talks, and he smiles when he listens to others talk. He's the last man you would expect to stand up as a David to the Goliath of the nutritional powers that be. And yet, as it turned out, Tim Noakes was the exact man for the job. His pleasantness and his smiles were disarming to his judges. It's hard for any person who's not poisoned by a cultish, low-fat ideology to get very upset with this man. Ultimately, he was vindicated twice over. 
Nina Tykold said, I'm very glad that Professor Noakes has fought this because I think it shows that we're not just going to roll over. Science is on our side. Well, amen to that. In the past, I've sometimes said I just don't understand why the low-carb diet is not the standard of care prescribed for every diabetic in every nation of the world. But after reading a little about Tim Noakes' trial and the forces that were arrayed against him, <laughs> I think I understand this a little better. Sadly, there are people who do not really want you to beat diabetes if it means that their food products or their cultish food religion or their nutritional ideology is going to be overthrown in the process. They'd rather you stay sick and miserable or die an early death than for them to have to admit I was wrong all along. And so our progress is slow. We'll get there step by step. Testimony by testimony, book by book, YouTube video by YouTube video, the word is getting out and there is no stopping a truth whose time has come. And my friends, I believe that the low-carb, high-fat diet with time-restricted eating is an idea whose time has come. If you've recently been diagnosed with diabetes and you've just discovered this channel, let me recommend that you go to our uploads page, which will give you access to every diabetic video we've posted since we began. As you work your way through all our videos, I believe you'll find the help you need. A link to our uploads page is in the description.